Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So YouTube is very saturated with content on buying luxury handbags. My channel is no exception to the extent that I absolutely love them and I have a large collection and I recently filmed a collection video which I will link for you down below in case you are interested. This video is meant to be more of a guide however rather than a collection although I will give you examples. So the thumbnail that you saw for this video is me plus my pre-loved handbag handbag collection and I would say about 50% of the designer handbags that I own were purchased pre-loved and it's something that I really do believe in because I think for me once I had that experience of buying the bag directly from the store I'm saying this specifically with Chanel in mind I would say um, I found that I actually, to some extent, get a little bit more enjoyment out of the hunt for a pre-loved, well-priced, good condition handbag. Usually very good or excellent condition, actually, in terms of the actual terms that are used. But, you know, something that has not seen too many battles, but has been gently loved um, so that it can be purchased at a bit of a discount so you don't quite get that, like, you know, new car driven off the parking lot going down in price immediately sort of effect. Um, that said, prices vary widely and there are a lot of tips and tricks that will help you to get a better deal if you are going to go down the pre-loved route. So I'm gonna give you five tips today and then at the end I'm going to give you a list of the sites that I have shopped from before with good experiences overall for the most part and give you a few of my own um, stories from buying pre-loved handbags. My number one tip is that in order to get an accurate mental picture and expectation of the condition of a designer handbag on a site. I'm saying this primarily with an eye to shopping online. Because the pre-loved market is still a primarily online market, how do you really know what to expect when you're going to receive your handbag? The trick is to rely primarily on the photos that they take. And I say that also because that's what the sites say. So in terms of, you know, making sure that you're buying a bag with an accurate expectation, their expectation is that you are going to primarily rely on the photos that they've taken which are usually high definition photos if you are coming across a site where the photos are not good quality they're not taken in good lighting they're not clear I would definitely steer clear I would say that is probably my number one tip it needs to have really really good photos because otherwise how can you know how used that handbag is it might be really dirty it might be really scuffed it might have a lot of corner wear that is something to really really look for um, in terms of how well a handbag has been taken care of I would say look at the corners and look at the back of it how worn it is and then after that you can pay a little bit more attention to things like the handles and the interior lining and how well the structure has been preserved but corner wear and the side of the bag that rests against the body that's where a lot of the wear starts to show first so those are things that you want to look for on the photos and the photos need to be clear enough so that you can tell so that's the first thing you want to look at. The second thing you want to look at after you've had a good look through all of those really nice, clear, high definition photos on like a good computer screen where you can see well where you are in good lighting as well is to really pay attention to the description. So a good pre-lift site will break it up in between the outside of the handbag and the inside of the handbag at a minimum. Some sites will even split it up further than that. So that's the number one thing you want to look at. Combine that knowledge of the photos plus the written description together to get an accurate picture of how used that handbag actually is. Do not rely purely on the categorization. So usually bags will have a five-fold categorization. It's usually something like excellent, very good, good, fair, or well loved and then some form of mo like more used category that you don't see pop up too much because usually they will only actually buy handbags that are in decent condition. You have to be aware that there's a difference between a site selling a bag directly versus consignment. And even within consignment, there really are two different types. There's a type where the site is consigning the bag with someone, so that someone is not going to be paid until the bag is sold. I would say that doesn't really change your experience too much. But then there are sites like eBay where you are buying directly from the owner of the handbag. What difference does that make? It's mainly a price difference. So you will see that sites like Fashion File buy and sell handbags, so they're essentially like a trading company, 
will have a higher price point than something like Vestia Collective, which primarily tends to be handbags that people are listing directly, or eBay, the seller, the owner of the handbag that is selling directly to you, which tends to have overall a lower price point, although not always, because it depends on the awareness of that person of the handbag and price point for that handbag. So it tends to kind of fluctuate more, whereas I find that prices where you're buying from a trader, so a trading company like um, the real real or like fashion file where they've already purchased the handbag those prices tend to be a little bit more stable across the board for you know like your Chanel medium flaps or something like that to give you some examples this bag which is one of my very favorites is a Chanel um, vintage vertical flap I bought it directly from the owner um, Mel Soldera she now owns a site where she is actually trading bags and that is called Shop Cocktails and Luxury. But at the time, this was her own handbag. So I bought it directly from her. I'm very, very happy with it and I got a really good deal for it as compared to certainly what they are trading for now, but certainly um, even at the time. Another really good example is this Chanel Medallion Tote. This bag is probably around 10 years old, but it was barely used. It has no corner wear. I purchased this handbag on Vestia Collective, and this was one of the best deals I have ever gotten for a pre-loved handbag. So Chanel handbags are very, very expensive. If you're watching this video, you probably have some awareness of that already. Um, I would say that this um, particular style of handbag tends to be lower priced as opposed to any kind of flap style or even some totes like the GST, which tend to have a higher resale value. It doesn't have a lot of hardware and it is a little bit of an older style that's kind of loved by a particular category of person, usually people like me who used to watch the hills and so for whom it is a little bit nostalgic. But other than that, it's kind of a handbag that is not as well known as like your GST or your flaps. For that reason, I think I got an amazing deal about on it. So some sites will kind of price this as a more kind of general Chanel price point, which tends to start at a minimum of like $2,500 now. But because this handbag is not as well known of a style and it was being sold directly by the owner on Vestiaire Collective, um, just somebody somewhere in the US, um, but also they have some people from Europe on there as well where handbags tend to be um, selling for a lower retail price point on resale. So it can also be a really great way to get a little bit of a deal have it shipped from France or from somewhere in the European Union. Um, this handbag sold for $800 to me and I would say I really got an amazing deal because every single one that I've seen since then on sites like The Real Real or Fashion File, depending on the condition of it, it will retail anywhere between $1,200 to $1,500. And I got this one for $800 and something and it has no corner wear, no wear on the back. It's gotten softened a little bit, but I've had it for over a year and worn it a ton. I love this little bag. Um, I love that I don't need to be too precious with it. It's just a really nice, just easy, easy tote that I um, absolutely love. My third tip for you is to make sure that you have a good awareness of what the handbag comes with and again, how that affects the price and whether therefore you are getting a fair price or not. You will often see on sites that have a lot of handbags like the Real Real or Fashion File that there will be multiple price points depending on what the handbag comes with, i.e. whether it comes with an authenticity card, whether it comes with the original packaging, if so, how much? Is it just a dust bag or is it the full box with the receipt, the authenticity card, the stuffing, the camellia if we're talking Chanel? So this particular handbag was purchased from a Nordstrom store and I purchased it from Fashion File. This was a good Fashion File experience. I will get to that um, at the end of this video. I would say especially with Chanel handbags because the Chanel produces an authenticity card for each handbag, whether or not it comes with that card is going to affect the price point. So for me, I paid a higher price point for this bag because it came with the full packaging receipt authenticity card, the works, but that price point was then lowered a little bit because it is a single flap that is a limited edition as opposed to being a classic. Going back to my point about description, this was described as being in good condition. It slightly expe exceeded my expectations, but it is very softened, you can see. It has a lot of structure loss. I don't mind that. The fact that this handbag did not come with a Celine box or anything fancy like that, it just came with a dust bag, didn't bother me. I just wanted a luggage and I didn't mind if it was a little bit more buttery or kind of worn in. And so I got a much 
um, better deal on it. I think I paid around fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars for this at the time, and it re now retails for I think four thousand. New, it's definitely increased since I purchased this bag, but that is another way that you can get a little bit of a better deal. Fourthly, something else to be aware of is color popularity and rarity of styles. So if you're looking for a handbag that was a limited edition that was in very very high demand, as opposed to a color that is kind of a little bit more out there, like let's say it's like a lime green or something like that that maybe was seasonal but wasn't particularly rare or sought after the price point is going to be lower than something that is like a classic black or a very popular limited edition so that's something to factor into your choices and to be aware of as well and again if a site is listing something like a lime green harder to wear chanel at the same price point as a classic black one you know that it's probably not super well priced Something else that I've noticed, navy handbags tend to be a little bit cheaper than black just because of popularity. So it's something else to kind of factor into your decision. So for example, this little red disco bag was purchased for less um, for a lesser price point than the disco in nude or black would be because those are just more popular choices. I've got my beautiful Montaigne bag. I'm so happy with this. And this is an example of where pre-loved really can be such a happy thing because I missed out on the opportunity to purchase this handbag new from the Louis Vuitton store. I saw and fell in love with it in London didn't buy it and then kept thinking about it for years. So finally I decided that if it came up on a pre-love site I would go ahead and buy it and I did do that. It is a rare color so I did not get a particularly good deal for it. It was around the same price point as a black Montagne would be but I'm personally so happy with it because this Iris color is just so beautiful and it goes with everything in my wardrobe and I've really really enjoyed having it. Another thing to factor into your decision when buying a pre-loved handbag is the return policy. So the real real does not have the best return policy. It tends to be that you can either not return a handbag or for some um, handbags that they list you have to pay the return shipping whereas Fashion File if you live within the United United States it's free return shipping if you live in Canada you have to pay for the exorbitant shipping to ship it back so that's always something to factor into your decision based on where you live and where you are shopping from even within the same site sometimes based on whether a handbag is consigned or not you can have a different return policy and in some cases you are not able to return them at all to tell you a little bit about the retailers that I have shopped from there are five that I want to mention the first is Yugi's closet it's a nice underdog it's also a site where they tend to do good discounts as well. I find that the prices are very fair there. The selection though is somewhat mediocre. I've had otherwise really good experiences shopping from them though. Another one of course which is going to be a very dominant choice, it's a really good introductory one because of how much selection they have, is Fashion File. This one would be my most recent, this was a very vindicating experience because this handbag came and it was essentially brand new with all of the packaging. It was not cheap but it was still cheaper than buying a bag from the Chanel store and at this point in my life I actually really enjoy the pre-loved shopping experience as opposed to the Chanel in-store experience. If you've seen my vlog on my boy bag you know why I did have one really really bad experience shopping from fashion files so you always have to be a little bit wary especially if you're an international customer like me so I purchased a vintage Chanel medium flap that I intended to give to my mother for her 60th birthday we made a video about this when I then subsequently gave her the Gucci Marmont which had, which had just come out at the time and I purchased that new for her but I thought a vintage Chanel would be a good fit for her as well and it arrived and it smelled like cigarettes which was not in the description and it was also extremely worn which again was not in the description. I want to say and you know my video on this is really the true recollection because it's been a while now but it, I'm pretty sure it was marked as being very good condition. I um, mean it was very poor condition in person but because I had it shipped to Canada it was a horrible shopping experience for me because I paid the tax and had to pay return shipping as well so I was very disappointed. I did not shop from Fashion File again for several years until I decided decided I wanted a chevron flap. I still really like shopping um, from Vestia Collective but I do think it is for that slightly more kind of skeptical experienced customer to shop from Vestia because it's a lot of direct from owner purchases. So although they do authenticate it so it goes through them, you're purchasing a bag that is priced and 
photographed directly by the owner and so for that reason it can be very fallible they can also from what i've heard from you guys be somewhat difficult for returns as well the real real also really really watch the return policy on the real real however i do do think that they have an excellent selection i think it's getting better and better if you're interested in a celine especially i've seen some really great celine handbags on there um and i think it's just a site that i really enjoy shopping for i think it's really well curated really easy to shop from the photos are excellent too everything is highly taxed here so anything that you order from any online retailer that is located outside of canada you will be paying tax on when it comes in um definitely try and find something that's local because at that point you don't need to deal with that but factor in the fact that they can often have very jacked up prices so a lot of local boutiques like Modacell that are, uh, that are in downtown Vancouver are very 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 highly priced for resale handbags. One option that I really really like looking at is Mal Soldera's Instagram page Shop Cocktails and Luxury. She's a Montreal businesswoman, she's a stylist and a YouTuber. You guys have probably already seen her if you're interested in luxury handbags. She has a really good selection. They sell out really fast mostly through Instagram um, but you won't have to pay the tax on those I think you just pay her for shipping and they're already in the country so it's kind of a nice treat to not have to deal with that it's funny because I sort of see them all together and I realize that for me there is no difference in terms of how much I love them in between the bags that I bought brand new and pre-loved so I think it's definitely something you want to look into if you're interested in purchasing a designer handbag it has allowed me for sure to have you know a more varied collection and a larger collection than for sure I would otherwise have and so I was happy to make this video for you here today if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below or any tips with retailers for example that you've had a good or bad experience with and please also leave that in the comments down below so that we can all benefit from your wisdom thank you so much for watching this video if you would like to see my next installment on style then make sure you give it a like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video bye